Welcome to the Vicarage, a place where stories are told and prayers are prayed. I'm Lisa Fishbeck, Vicar of the Episcopal Church of the Advocate here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. In this season of the Vicarage, we meet at the Advocate Pond to tell the stories of the women from the Episcopal Church's Great Cloud of Witnesses, or the Women of the Cloud. This week, we remember Marjorie Kemp, a woman mystic of the 14th century. Marjorie's story is expansive and spiritually and psychologically compelling. She was born to an affluent household in Norfolk, England in 1373, and at the age of 20 was married to John Kemp. It is said that together they had at least 14 children. Whew. After the birth of her first child, Marjorie suffered severe mental illness for nearly eight months likely what we would today call postpartum depression. In that time, she had dramatic hallucinations of the devil and of Jesus. She reported conversations with Jesus, Mary, God, and other religious figures. She emerged very devout and was known for her abundant and public weeping, begging for Christ's forgiveness and mercy and giving thanks for the same. Unlike other mystics of her time, Hildegard of Bingen, Julian of Norwich, Kemp did not join a convent or a religious order, but rather continued in her marriage and carried out her life of devotion, prayer, and tears in public. Indeed, her visions provoked her public displays of loud wailing and sobbing and writhing, which frightened and annoyed both clergy and lay people, who resented her behavior because it seemed to imply a superior connection to God, diminishing their own experience. As a result, Kemp was tried for heresy multiple times in her life, though never convicted. The heresies with which she was charged included wearing all white clothing as a married woman, in other words, impersonating a nun, believing, as she apparently did, that she could pray for the souls of those in purgatory and tell whether or not someone was damned. And third, most significantly, preaching, which was forbidden to women. She evidently walked a fine line in her public expression between the telling of her own spiritual experience and actually teaching about the scriptures. Once the children were mostly grown, in her early 40s, Kemp went on pilgrimage. Stunning for a woman of her day, she traveled over more than a year to Venice, to the Holy Land, to Rome, and a year later, she went to Santiago de Compostela. Evidently illiterate for her entire life, Kemp learned by listening to others read aloud. In the 1420s, she dictated her own book, known today as the Book of Marjorie Kemp, which illustrates her visions, mystical and religious experiences, as well as her temptations to lechery her travels, and her trials for heresy. Kemp's book is commonly considered to be the first autobiography written in the English language. It is said to provide the best insight available of female middle-class experience in the Middle Ages. May Marjorie Kemp her, and, her, and her compelling life help us to realize and appreciate the varieties of faithful living. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the life of Marjorie Kemp, mystic, who passing through the cloud of unknowing beheld your glory. Help us, after her example, to see you more clearly and love you more dearly. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Be well.